So welcome back to Azmuth Podcast. And uh, the next uh, article that we're going to be talking about was something that, that came in the news. And it's San Francisco. Oh, boy. Is uh, <laughs> having the first non-citizen uh, to serve on an elections commission. Is this the new Manchurian candidate? Um, I mean, we, we see a huge influx of Chinese nationals at the southern border that are coming over as illegal immigrants. And for the first time, Chinese uh, nationals are exceeding Mexican Mexican. nationals Mm -hmm. coming over the border. Now, let me explain something. When I use the word Chinese, I do not mean a a race. That is not a race. That is a country of origin. Uh, Asians uh, would be um, you know, the race of, of people. But what I'm talking about is people from China. So when I say Chinese, I'm not throwing... Use this, precise words precisely. Use precise words precisely. I'm not, not throwing a blanket. I'm saying people from China who have Chinese passports and are citizens of China are arriving at the southern border and infiltrating into the U.S. Um, oftentimes, they're single men, uh, military-aged fighting males. and uh, Just like most of the other nationalities that are coming across the border. Exactly. And they are now have exceeded the amount of Mexican nationals that are coming across the border. Um, So it's interesting to to see, um, you know, that we have non-citizens that are being appointed to roles that uh, are concerning elections. Uh, I mean, well, so she isn't even eligible to vote, but she's supposed to be on the board of elections so last year i looked up uh, how is this even possible last year um the california court decided that non-citizens could be on the board of elections where they get the logic from that i have no idea because i mean you want people who represent the united states who have a vote you know who are allowed to vote be on the elections i mean kind of makes sense yeah uh, yeah, absolutely. So her name is Kelly Wong, and uh, and she is uh, um, grew up in China uh, as well. She's and, only been here since 2019. Right. And she is an advocate uh, for immigrant rights. And that, that okay, that's fine uh, to be an advocate. They're not American citizens, but, though. They don't have the same rights. I'm so tired of talking about immigrant rights. Like, look, you have the right to not be beaten to death just because you look different, but you are not an American citizen, so you have not earned the right to be like the rest of us. And if we went to China, if we went to Venezuela or any of these other countries, guess what? We would not have the same rights there. Right. So it's interesting that uh, that she's been assigned to this election council. And, and, um, and so uh, there is this push in, in California to have non-citizens uh, vote in local school boards and in local elections. And I think it starts in a huge slippery slope. So we have the influx of Chinese men uh, coming across the southern border, um, mostly in California area. Uh, what are they going to be doing? Is there some type of cooperation uh, uh, you know, with this uh, immigrant rights uh, advocate? Uh, and then now being on the uh, election uh, you know, council, um, for San Francisco, I mean, is course, there is there is the a, possibility of of you know some type of collusion to allow these right. these citizens to subvert uh, our democracy? I mean, it's I mean, it's with the not, not, possibility, not uh, seeming less and less outrageous of a conspiracy theory. Um, but this isn't really new. Weren't you telling me about a template? That yeah. So so um, I believe it was. Uh, um, six election cycles ago um, that uh, in Chinatown in San Francisco, uh, a number of um, advocates for voting, right? So they're signing, they're helping people get registered to vote. And they had cardboard templates uh, that were pre-cut out um, and had check marks in various locations uh, that you could just overlay on the voter registration form. And they were grabbing people and, and overlaying this template and saying, fill this out in the template so they're steering all these people to on on what boxes to check and things like that and you can't do that you can't that's against the law <laughs> and so they may as well have just filled it out 
and said, "Sign here." Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much that's pretty much exactly what was happening. And so they got in trouble. Um, and I don't recall what, if if there was an arrest or if they just got a hey, stop doing that. But here we here we go. It's a, these advocacy groups that are pushing non-citizens to register to vote and pre-filling out their forms for them in the in the effect of having a cardboard template that overlays on top of the voter registration form. So I, I see a lot of huge problems with this. Well, you said advocacy group. You know, I'm getting more and more leery of anything that is a feel-good name. Like, mm, why do they feel the need to make it sound super feel-good? Maybe I should check this out. <laughs> and often, It's like Inflation Reduction Act. Mm, did nothing to reduce inflation. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, border bill. Mm, really not about the border. It's a Ukraine bill. And now it is officially, <laughs> it is pretty much officially in Ukraine and pro Hamas bill as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so yeah, be, buyer beware. Don't, right. don't trust everything you see. You know, it's like, oh, you're too judgmental. Really? Have you not seen enough? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when, you, when you look at, at all of the things that are that are happening um it just makes you go hmm i'm not I'm not we're not conspiracy theorists but you know we we have uh just a, take a second look just take a second look we have a a, a a chinese a woman from china that is a non-citizen being appointed to do elections um she's uh advocating for non-citizens uh to to vote and in order to have the right to vote and then we have a large influx of chinese men uh, stinking across the uh, the southern border, which would make them non-citizens. Um, it just something I mean, that makes you go. Hmm. They haven't paid taxes. They haven't, you know, studied all the the history that we had to learn growing up, and and we should learn history. Uh, they haven't had to do the things that we've had to do. They they did other things in China that prioritized China. This is our country. So if they haven't had to grow up prioritizing the United States, then they need to take the citizens exam, citizenship exam and go through the processes like everyone else so that they can prove that the United States is a priority for them. Yeah, and, and become a naturalized citizen. Yeah, I mean, um, we have I to mean, look out a, after ourselves great, first because if we fall, no one's coming to save us. Right. It's a, I mean, it's a great and wonderful thing whenever, um, you know, somebody becomes a naturalized citizen. It's because, you know, a lot of countries... Um, you're a citizen by by birth. Actually, I take that back. In most countries, you're a citizen of that country if your parents were citizens of that country. Okay, the United States is one of the rarities in the world that has birthright citizenship just being born on the terrain of the United States. Yeah. So that that's that's a rarity. So, but when somebody chooses to become a naturalized citizen, that's a beautiful thing um, because and they're usually the most pro-America people. Absolutely, you can find, and I love that. Absolutely, I mean, you see them flying, you know, holding little American flags, and and they're proud um, because they had to earn it, and they had to study for it and take the exam. And and I would challenge, I would challenge um, uh, anybody to go online and take a practice example exam of the naturalization exam exam and see how well you can do. I think that should be a high school requirement. I, yeah, to graduate high school? Yes. Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, and and you know, it, it, it's it's the it, it's stuff that you take for granted, like what are the three branches of government? Um, mm -hmm. you know, who was uh, uh, the first president of the United States? I mean, it's it's a good history. It's good to know anyway uh, these things. And mm -hmm. so um, you know, it's just um, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see people who want to be citizens, um, but they have to do it the right way. And yeah, they have and she to, thinks she can just skip the line and influence elections instead of getting the right to vote. She can't, she's not even allowed to vote. Thank goodness, because, again, I don't know what her priorities are. Right. But, um, you know, this is a dangerous signal for, for the rest of the world because, you know, we lived in Morocco for over a year, and one thing— one of the biggest takeaways for me was the rest of the world watches us yes. so much more than we watch them. I mean, most of us can't point out Morocco on a map or any of these other countries on a map. And you can go to a peasant with no money living on the street in Morocco, middle of nowhere in Morocco, 
and they can tell you more about us and we can tell about them. Right. And so they are paying attention. And so when they see things like, you know, someone who doesn't have the right to vote here influence voting here, it's like, hey, it's free season. We may as well jump in and punch too. It's, it's like bullies in a schoolyard. <laughs> it's like, hey, let's just pile on. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. I was in Brazil uh, maybe about 15 years ago in Rio de Janeiro, and I was talking to some of the locals, and um, it was an election uh, season. Um, I believe it was the, uh, the 20... Um, uh, sorry, the 2008 election. Um, and so, it, you know, it was kind of going in, in full full swing. And um, uh, it was interesting because the, the Brazilians that I was uh, talking to said that they pay attention hyper vigilantly to all the U.S. elections. And they said it, they can't believe that typically the typical, I think, is it is it 20 or 30 percent turnout? What, what, yeah, it, it's low. Um, it's like really yeah, low. And uh, um, they ben Shapiro their mind. says like 10 million people are like politically engaged. I'm like, we're a country of 330 million people. Now, I don't know how many of those are adults. Right. But still, that is a tiny, tiny portion. Yeah, I want to say it's tw- 20 or 30 percent turnout actually come out to I vote. Mean, I think and that just Taylor blew- Swift has like 300 times more fans uh, in the United States. Right. So anyway, they, they, they said, you know, it, it's amazing to them that there are so few Americans that care enough to come out and vote. They said, we would love to be able to vote in U.S. elections because what happens in the United States affects, affects the world, affects yes. the world. And so they have they, they feel as though they have a stake in it as well because their economies are tied to the United States and uh, and the policies um, that are tied to the United States. And uh, and so they they wish that they could vote. And so um, obviously they can't because they're non-citizens. But again, uh, this goes to this article where we have uh, non-citizen advocates that are being assigned to election commissions, election committees. Well, I think if we paid attention to the rest of the world, like the rest of the world pays attention to us. I think we would have avoided a lot of missteps and some of the pitfalls of where we are now. You know, I mean, we saw Europe just bring on immigrants, immigrants, welfare states, welfare states. And um, they had a lot of gender clinics. Now a lot of gender clinics are gone, yet we <laughs> have increased ours. And so we're not paying attention and learning from other people's mistakes. And I, I try to tell our kids one of the wisest things you can do as a human being is learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to go through that suffering of the consequences yourself. I mean, I grew up in rural Georgia and I learned from a lot of people's mistakes. If I hadn't, I'd be, I'd be a meth head somewhere. I mean, (laughs) I doubt that. Well, I mean, you know, teen pregnancy, super high, you know, a handful of my brother, uh, a majority of my brother's friends growing up, you know, ended up in jail for one reason or the other related to drugs. I, I mean, one newspaper article about 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, um, three guys went to jail for uh, some scheme robbing a pharmacy of drugs. Two of the three were friends that my brother grew up playing with. <laughs> it, it's just so I just learned from people getting knocked up too early, people getting involved in drugs. And, you know, and I, and I was in high school and I was like, you know what? I'm OK on money because I would do chores around the house for money. I would uh, go and clean other people's houses for money. But I was like, you know what? Not only should I go get a job for money, but also so that I wouldn't be bored because being bored and have the energy of a teenager, dangerous thing. So um, we need to learn from the, you know, the rest of the world, and hopefully people are watching us and hope not planning how to attack us, but learning <laughs> from our mistakes as, right. w- as well. Well, I mean, you know, just I mean, France has uh, just recently passed uh, a law um, that makes it easier to deport people if they're disrespecting the country. And there was an imam. That's uh, one we need to watch for. Yeah, there was an imam that uh, was on social media with a French flag saying that the French flag was a symbol of Satan. 
And they're like, get Why out. Why are you they there sent, then? They You're sent them back to Tunisia. Um, and so, you know, that, that there are countries that are, that are saying, look, we're just not, we're not tolerating this anymore. If you're not going to integrate into our society, then we don't want you to be part of our society. And, uh, and it's think, not about erasing, you know, your memory of where you came from. It's just so that everyone's on the same page, you know, with the same values so we can live together. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for watching Azimuth Podcast, and have a great day. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.